Right. Here with reaction is Florida Senator Marco Rubio. Senator, what are we to make with what can only be described as utter confusion here and mixed messages? You know, we got one part of the administration saying one thing one day, another thing another day, the president one thing one yeah. day, another thing another day. You know, what, what's going on here? Well, first let me explain why it's happening, and then I'll tell you what its impact is. The reason why it's happening is because this president ran by basically bragging that he was going to get us out of every conflict on the planet. He was going to disengage us from the Middle East. This is not uncommon among isolationists like himself, people who believe that American engagement is actually the reason why these problems exist. He, in essence, believes it's America's fault in many instances that we have these enemies. And so he's bragged about it for years, and now suddenly reality is forcing him back in. Let me tell you the implications. The implications are that all these other countries we're trying to create a coalition with, especially the Arab countries, they listen to his speeches, but they also listen to this confusion. And what they conclude is, we're not really committed to a true anti-Islamic terror campaign. He's going to do what he needs to do in the short term to deal with this, but we're not going to see it through under this president. And so that lack of reliability has really undermined this nation's credibility, and I really think undermines our ability to successfully put together a coalition of nations right. to confront uh, this threat. All right. uh, on top of all of this, now the administration said that there's going to be no boots on the ground. And then listen to, listen to General Dempsey and what he said, no shock and awe. And I want to ask you if it's possible to win a war, which is, I guess, what some of them are saying with this policy. Listen to this. We will be prepared to strike ISIL targets in Syria that degrade ISIL's capabilities. This won't look like a shock and awe campaign because that's simply not how ISIL is organized, but it will be a persistent and sustainable campaign. Is it possible? I mean, the president stood by and watched city after city that Americans shed their blood and died for be taken over by, by ISIS. Can, it, right. can you win a war with no boots on the ground, no shock and awe? Is that possible? No, and then, you know, the generals know that. They're trying to balance between what they know to be right militarily and what the mandates are politically. Here, here's the challenge, though. They're going to have to be confronted because ISIL isn't just a terrorist group. It's also an insurgency. So they control territory. They operate on the ground. They take control of villages and try to impose Sharia law. They're going to have to be defeated by ground troops. Now, ideally, in a perfect world, they would be local ground troops. They would be Sunnis they, and the, the, taking back their villages. They would be Iraqi armed elements. They would be Syrian rebels who are moderate and equipped. That's the ideal outcome. We have to be prepared, however, for the reality that that may not come together in time, that they will have to be confronted. And at that point, the choice we have is the following. If it doesn't work out with these local troops, does ISIL get to stay? Do they continue to be able to operate, or do we truly do what's necessary to defeat them? And this president clearly is looking forward to leaving it to his successor to figure all of that out, because, as he has said repeatedly, Americans are not going to do anything beyond these airstrikes. I think that's a, he's not being honest with the American people when he talks about it that way. We had Senator McCain on last night. He took issue with a report in The Hill and from a humanitarian group on the ground that, in fact, the rebels in Syria have now reached a peace agreement with ISIS. Does that then put in jeopardy any idea of maybe supporting the rebels there with, with some type of munitions, or should we only offer that to the Kurds? What should we do? Well, first of all, it is complicated in Syria. One of the reasons why it's so complicated is because had we gotten involved earlier, a year and a half or two, in identifying with moderate groups, we might, it might have been easier to work with them. Not easy, but easier. Unfortunately, time has passed. These groups have degraded, and it may be harder than ever to find groups we can work with. As far as that peace agreement is concerned, there's a, there was a couple of reports about that. There are a significant number of reports afterwards that dispute that, including from the free, free Syrian army elements that say that isn't true. I still believe that there are groups that we can work with in Syria, uh, but they need a lot of help. I mean, these, are, these groups are smaller than they used to be. They're less equipped. They're, they're poorly funded. It, that's not going to happen overnight. This is going to take, ti this is gonna take time. And the truth is that the ISIL threat might be moving a lot faster than the capability of these Syrian rebels to keep up. So we should try to do it, but we shouldn't put all our eggs in that basket. It may not come together in time. And do you believe that ISIS, because of the vulnerability at our border, do you think they would cross there? Because when I was down there in, and I got a briefing with, with uh, Governor Perry, I was told that people are coming from Yemen and Syria and Afghanistan and Pakistan. Right. Do you think that they are already here in the U.S., or do you think they would use the southern border to cross? Sure, potentially. But it's not just ISIS. I mean, there are multiple groups around the world that want to strike us. I mean, we forget with all this focus on ISIL, and rightfully so, that there are multiple other groups that are plotting the exact same things. There's a new al-Qaeda affiliate in the Indian Peninsula. There's, uh, you know, other, the Khorasan group in Syria, which is a very dangerous group. There's al-Nusra. There's all sorts of elements in, in Pakistan that are extremely dangerous as well. But here's my other point, Sean. They don't have to cross the border. 
some of these people, because they hold European passports, and in some instances, American passports, can come on an airplane. So yeah. the, 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 the border is certainly a concern, but so are our airports, because many of them come from visa waiver countries that allow them immediate access to our nation. All right, Senator, thank you. Appreciate your time tonight. Thank you, Sean.